everyone! This is Swizzly Bubbles here, and you might be wondering a few things. One, why is there a random hive swap video on this channel? I thought you only covered change the channel videos. Well, eh, yeah, they're partially right. I've sort of just taken a break from those for a while just to let everything settle down. And mostly it's just to let everything just calm down after a bit because it's stressful. It's been taking a toll out of me. Um, and I bet the second thing you're wondering is, where is the Sonic video that you promised during a live stream? Well, I'll tell you where that is. It was going to be happening, and then I had an injury happen. And I was incapacitated for a few days. So, to act as a sort of pick-me-up to that, we're going to be playing a game that I just got recently. It's only a half hour long, it's very quick, but I figure it'd be nice to give you guys something to watch, just in the meantime. The Sega video is still coming about Sonic games and all that, but for now, um, let's just talk about this. So for those of you who don't, excuse me, for those of you who don't know, Hive Swap is a video game, uh, based on the series Homestuck, which was a book series written by Andrew Hussey. Um, it was really popular back in, uh, 2012, I want to say. Um, the comic started back in 2009, ended in 2016 with an epilogue soon on the way. Um, Viz Media just picked it up. There's been restructuring around there. They also made a game. They made a Kickstarter for this game called Hive Swap. Um, and while they're working on Hive Swap Act 2, because it's supposed to be a game split up into four parts, these are what's going to be in its place. Little mini games that are written by Andrew Hussey himself, um, called uh, Hive Swap Friendship Simulator. I have seen none of this game. I've only seen, like, Parts of it on the subreddit. I only know it's 99 cents if you want to check it out. You can go ahead and check it out. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to um, see this game for yourself. Um, and they're going to release these with um, trolls, which are like the aliens of uh, Homestuck and Hive Swap, respectively. It takes place in the same universe. It's a bit complicated. But just know what you're getting yourself into because uh, <laughs> games are only 99 cents, but they're supposed to be like. 59 more games coming out, each with um, their own takes on each of the prospective trolls that you're supposed to be, you know, friendship, like making, that you're supposed to be making a friendship with. Um, I don't know what that means in this context, but I guess we'll soon find out. So, it's a bit of a cash grab, but I've heard it's an enjoyable cash grab. So, enough lollygagging around. Let's actually start the game. You have just crash-landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You are now completely alone in a strange world. Desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you are desperate for... Friendship. Oh, Jesus. Won't someone on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do, you're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? Oh, we get to choose. Okay. Um, so we go with the spider lady, the Vriska ripoff, or this kid, Diamond. Demon? Uh, I'm going to go with our data. Um, and then we'll go from left to right. Um, I've also heard this game has multiple endings, uh, so I'm just going to do one quick playthrough for now, um, and if you guys want to see more, just tell me. These are these are going to be like really quick episodes, um, and just let me know if you want me to go through the uh, other endings to these. Let's start with our data. Yes, someone is approaching. A strange grayscaled alien clad in blue. Perhaps they will make for a good friend? Oh, the music. Oh, that face. Dear God. And just what are you supposed to be? It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance too there, young lady. And my, why do I say nice horns? Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of some medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Oh yeah, I need to... I'm like scraped, bruised, probably internal bleeding, but... You know what, let's just make a good friend while we're here. Oh. Oh, my. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm slightly frightened now. Oh, how funny this is. How very droll. You, you want to be my friend? It's too much. This, this thing at my doorstep, <laughs> wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with maniacal laughter. How rare. You apologize for your presumptuous request. You hang your head. Turn around and begin to walk away. And just what the fuck do you think you're doing? Oh, sassy. I mean, this was supposed to be an M-rated game for numerous reasons. Which is weird because Hive Swap itself is not an M-rated game. So I'm curious how this is going to play out. Who invited you to leave? Excuse me. I was just trying to get medical attention. You just want to be the little snark. You stop in your tracks obediently and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain. Oh my god, I actually am internally bleeding. I need to get to a hospital. But this does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. Show no mercy, I guess. It dawns on me that we may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. Where are my manners? Ghastly behavior on my part. Also, if you're wondering about like the triple eyes for everything, that's that's not a typo. That's that's something called quirks. Each troll has their own quirk in Homestuck. You'll, you'll find that out if you just, like, read through a few of the, albeit long, pester logs in some of the comics. Or, or in some of the comic panels, rather. Um, needless to say, this exists in all trolls throughout the series. After all, it isn't your fault to seem to be some sort of tragic, hideous freak, is it? And such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a devastating shortfall of social confidence. Oh, 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 teach me your ways, then. I'm sorry, I've just landed at your doorstep, and now you're giving me advice on how to be social with people. Jesus. I would weep for you, really, except that crying out of three eyes at once gets a bit messy. Oh, right, she has a third eye. So instead, I think I'll be saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside? Or if she just got you to stay a little longer so she can insult you some more? Knowing this Vriska clone, I, I highly, highly think it's going to be the latter. You try to remain stoic while your confrontational new friend decides what to do with you. Unfortunately, you sniffle slightly. Oh. Oh my. Oh dear. You're sad. <laughs> so amusing to me. Mildly entertaining, even? Or mildly endearing, even? Perhaps. I'll decide later if it's endearing. Once I have more information, it's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. But for now, try to put yourself at ease. You completely pitiful fool. Not one more sniffle. Do you understand? You nod while practicing exemplary control over your nose. You've gotten yourself so agitated. I wonder why you have nothing to worry about from me. Okay, Miss Pushy, I'll, I'll take your advice on that. Of course I will be your friend. Conditionally, I mean. There is a chance the designation will be formalized if you behave in ways that I approve of. Starting now. Let's call it a friendship in progress. Agreed? Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend. Oh gosh, all you have to do is try not to fuck anything up at all. Possibly for many hours. Come into my hive. This way, after me. You look like you could use nourishment. Already? Okay. This is not inside your house. We're, we're still outside. I don't know what it is that Matt... I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats, generally. But it doesn't matter. You will eat whatever it is I have on hand, if I tell you to. How does that sound? How does it sound? Okay, we're going to make our first choice. Uh, it sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. It sounds fine, I guess. Well, I would say it sounds fine, I guess. That's just what I would say. But she seems to like to have a lot of power. And I'm getting the sense that if I play to that strength, maybe she'll, you know, want to actually talk and discuss, maybe open up a bit, maybe maybe even be a friend, a domineering friend, but a friend nonetheless. Uh, I'll do whatever you say. Obviously it sounds good, and you will definitely enjoy it. 
Okay, then. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to, and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. Oh shit! Here we go. We're we're in the friend bubble. Oh shit! It will. I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You say, "Oh yes, absolutely." You nod as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. Oh, I miss this dialogue. It's so witty and so stupid. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of your arms is probably broken too. Jesus, how hard was that fall? It was just like he crashed out of a rocket ship and like popped out. It didn't seem like he got hurt that badly. Jesus. <laughs> Poor guy. You'll try to make sure she doesn't notice though. It would probably leave a bad impression. Come with me. There's something I need your help with. Now we're in your house. Now things are happening. This is your kitchen. Why are we in your kitchen? You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. I suppose she's going to fix you something to eat soon, as promised. This music, though, is, like, way too enchanting for this situation. Like, it, it does does not fit the tone at all, but it's so good. Like, the music is... It, the music... Whoever did the music, because I don't know if this is still by James Roach and Toby Fox after they left, but it's... It's amazing, like, for the, like, just for what it is. As atmospheric music, eh, it's fine. But, yeah, like, thumbs up. Props to whoever did this. Uh, you pass through a kitchen and out the other side to another room? Okay, you guess dinner can wait. This way, try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments cause me any inconvenience. Oh, so you guess she doesn't know you're injured. Fair enough. You hobble a little faster through another door into a much darker room, and now down a flight of stairs. Where is she taking us? It's hard to see. There are torches along the walls ahead. A monstrous noise rumbles below. She's not taking me to, like, her Lucis, is she? Because if I remember anything from the comic, it's that Lucises are incredibly fucking dangerous and i don't want to be near hers don't mind her she's just hungry she's always hungry though well are well some of them i remember were pretty nasty there are others that are just like calm or whatever it just sort of depends on the troll what's that you're hungry too i've not forgotten what sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for i take you for a friend that's not going to get me eaten at the very least you didn't remind her that you're hungry. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? If she's... If she has the powers that I think she does, then... Yeah, she probably can. You hope not. That's going to make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. Here we are. This is where you'll be most useful to me as a friend. Okay, why is there a camera here? Where, where are we? Why do you just have random boxes and pictures of yourself on the wall? Okay, you look around with a sense of relief. You see no sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down here. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shapes and sizes. Or of various shape and size. She has kids trapped down here. Why do you have all of these people trapped down here? One of them makes eye contact with you. No, please no. The boy is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. He has a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. He struggles to say, uh, oh. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help, oh. He says, help, oh. But, which, I mean, hello, of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress chosen by the great and beautiful Ardada. She's my savior, my reason for being. I am nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. You turn away from this boy. You don't want to hear anything he has to say. Ever again. <laughs> don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. Come, over here. This is what I need your help with if you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You're led to a dank corner of this... Well, you're going to call it like you see it, this dungeon. 
Your new friend is a dungeon full of sad, suffering children, and presumably a monster looking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. And again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in its box, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. You're a lazy motherfucker. You just want me to do your chores, is that it? Is that what all this is about? Just have me do your chores for you? It's a box containing a table? Oh. Oh, the table's already pre-built. Okay. A table that uh, looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. Oh, I'm causing a torch. This is a torture chamber. I will need you to assemble it. I have want no part in this. I don't know what kind of friendship you think this is, but... Um... I, I don't help people with torture. That's not the kind of person I am. I just met you. Here's a screwdriver in case you need it. I will assume other required tools are contained within the box. You take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal and friendly banter? Perhaps a sling for your arm and a remedial bomb for your ribs? Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on, before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. Your fans? You mean the kids trapped in the cages? Okay. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod. Okay, she's over there now. And points it at you. A video feed comes to light on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of a screen an unflattering image of... Or an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangles contain shots of the other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them, too. You had no idea this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. Now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable-looking chair facing you and holding a chalice, switching around some viscous fluid it contains. Is she gonna blackmail me? What? What the fuck? What is this game? Oh, oh, is that a picture of her Lussus there? It's just a- oh, it's just a giant spider. Goody! You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to their labels and the instructions. You try to remember the last time you assembled something like this, you don't recall enjoying it. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't look like it will be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not to your liking? Not particularly, no. I didn't think I'd be handling someone's torture table today. You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's so what you're born for, you say, as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where can most of these screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver, then study the screws. Every single one requires an alien wrench. An Allen wrench. Wait, a what? An Allen wrench? Is that supposed to be alien, or is that literally, like, a Woody Allen wrench? Like, it's just a wrench. It's just a wrench with a picture of Woody Allen's face on it. Does this even come with an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. You look around, but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some of the screws too. Damn it. You begin to sweat and look around nervously. You check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. I wonder what to do next. Get the hell out of there. Just do your best assembling the table. This is what friends are for. Uh, I don't think she'll let me out of here. I don't think I really have a choice in the matter. Um, it's not what friends are for, but I don't want to get eaten, or killed, or murdered, or massacred. So I'm just gonna do what she says. This is what friends are for, right? This is what friends are for. Please don't murder me and gut me in my sleep. You decided 
would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Okay, this can't be a typo. This is a missing Allen wrench. What the fuck is an Allen wrench? Maybe it's something. Okay, maybe it's a wrench or something that I don't know about. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know anything about mechanical stuff or machinery or cars or anything or what have you. I've just never heard of something called an Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad form. You'll just make do and twist it all twist in all the screws by hand as best you can. Your broken arm isn't making this any easier. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against each other while you nudge them into position with your legs so the screw holes align. She has to know I'm injured at this point, right? Because I'm leaning over, like, hunched over, like, just twisting the screw in precariously while I'm in pain and my ribs are busted. R right? I'm not crazy here, right? It's really frustrating work, you're not going to lie. As you're twisting in the first screw, the grooves slip and the screw gets stuck. But you've already turned it too tight, now it's hard to get it out. You twist and reverse harder. But your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide. They're going to fall. You react to catch them, but it's too late. The heavier piece tips over and slams you in, slams you in the broken ribs. Oh, God. On its way to the floor. It hits the floor with a bang. The stuck screw pops out and goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away, settling deep beneath, deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. I am really bad at speaking today. God, you're probably going to need to get that. You hear a light chuckle. <laughs> Good. Good. She takes another step from her chalice and settles even more comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? You think she's enjoying watching you struggle to put this stupid thing together. Maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. A friend is a friend and you don't like to let your friends down. You've committed yourself to this project. You will get the screw out from under there and a bit... You will get the screw out from under there a bit later. <clears throat> I always have problems speaking in these videos. Maybe that's my quirk. I just don't know when the fuck to shut up. Maybe when you fi maybe when you need the final screw. <clears throat> maybe when you need the final screw, you turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. This is not what I expected out of a friendship simulator game. I didn't expect to be doing housework. I didn't expect to be doing any sort of furnishing at all. You place the biggest part, the table platform, flat on the floor. The legs would be pointing upward if they were attached. You position one leg in the right spot in alignment with the holes. Sit on the table platform and steady the leg with your feet. You grab another screw and concentrate. We are going into, like, very, very, very precarious detail about this table. <laughs> she sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, for watching this sort of activity to make someone so happy. But you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted, important even, if only somewhat menially, to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice one of the caged kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from it, from it, from underneath its hiding place. Nice. Everyone's working like a team down here. Uh... I love, I love this writing. I mean, it's stupid. We're basically just piecing together a table with, like, trap kits inside. But the writing just makes it sound so... What's the word? So over-the-top and comedic. It's great. Ardada does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. Ooh. She reaches toward him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slides back under the thing. She releases him from his breathing problems, resumes her pleasant expression, and takes another sip from the chalice. You guess that was against the rules? You decide to make a note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. About an hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other countermans attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using your only good arm. How long have we been down here, by the way? I mean, I know we've been here for an hour, but how long before that? It seems she may have forgotten about the final missing screw. You doubt the table needs it. You decide you won't bring it up if she won't. You give it, you give it a test. It's pretty wobbly since you were only able to tighten the screws with your bare fingers, but again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines and has a look on her face which 
makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She's finished her drink and the chalice is on a side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor toward her. It looks like some sort of spider, the size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. Actually, you think it's a huge tick? That's what it looks like. It settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down on the rather rickety table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. No. You, you fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the caged kid, she raises an arm toward him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage, which apparently wasn't locked. He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on its surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stickball is. Oh, you really are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of arena stickball. Played on a table. Got it. You don't, but you nod. Now go to it. <laughs> you shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do, since the thing comes lifted with, comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge, tick-like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. She plops the enormous thing right down on the kid's chest. He appears rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. Oh, God, no! She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark, rust-colored blood dribbles from the place where it has attached to the boy's neck. Oh, no, he's a rust blood! Okay, if you haven't read Home Stuff, spoilers for the comic, um, rust bloods are kind of seen as, like, the lowly shits of the world. Like, they are just, like, completely shat on. And in the comic, one of the trolls is actually crippled for the sole fact that he's just a rust blood and pathetic. So, this kind of makes sense in a weird, sickening way. Oh, that poor kid. Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process, proud almost. Then she looks at you expectantly. I'm not drinking that. If you're thinking I'm gonna drink that, I'm not drinking that. That's his blood. Well, you don't want to know what she means. The final screw. Oh, okay. Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it into wherever it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't think... I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course, what were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. You stoop very low to the ground on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer under the large edifice. It's dark in there and goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn little screw to roll. You take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm, but come up empty. It must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, that must be it. Just a little further. You have an idea. A tool would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. Hmm. How did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. I think you're liking her more every minute. You grab the screwdriver and feel around for it. You... Yes, you got it, you think. You carefully scrape it closer to yourself and then pick it up. You then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you left unscrewed. You slide under the table as a mechanic could with a car. You slide under the table as a mechanic would with a car, rather. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling quite a bit now. The tick is really getting into its dinner, it seems. All the loose screws in the table have added up a lot of... All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. Ardata has returned to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and typing some remarks into a chat window. <laughs> this is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Getting meta, aren't we? Uh, I, I would not want this as content on my channel. I would not want a kid getting his blood sucked out by a tick on my channel. Um, but, you know, different strokes for different psychopaths. Go on, complete your project. This will be very good. You still think it's weird that she likes watching you put furniture together so much, but you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. 
You screw in the final screw, but the stresses on the table are causing the holes to be misaligned. Oh, this won't be easy. The huge tick shifts its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. You nervously, you nervously slide halfway from, out from under the table to check it out. Oh god. Then a loud pop. Then the sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit thing this... What a piece of shit this thing is. You think a little too late. You really needed that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. The table platform comes crushing down in your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. You bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. Oh god, there's a bl there's blood on my screen! You forget that you're still holding the screwdriver. In your desperate flailing, you plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, spraying your entire upper body and face. That's not- that's not rust-colored. That's red-colored. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes, but you can't imagine she's thrilled about what's going on here. Your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from under this shitty table. You have an idea. With your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling, Yeehaw! You clutch the screwdriver handle with your other hand hard. And there she goes. The blood-gushing monster starts kicking and rearing, then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig at a rodeo. You hold on for dear life, still blind, but your plan works. You've been pulled out from under the tomb you spent the last hour constructing for yourself. Oh, there she goes again! <laughs> Her pelvis is in your pelvis is in ruins, but at least you're free now, and riding like the wind. As you and the blood-spewing tick go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear a boy crying, Oh no. Oh, so she goes again. What is she doing? Is she taking pictures? You guess our daughter became distracted enough by your foolish display to cease her paralyzation method on him. Or maybe distracted is the wrong word. Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness. Oh god, you might be blowing it right now. The tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, 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 your brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. It careens through the rest of the hive, crashes through the front door, then comes to a sudden halt. You're catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. The blood is still on my screen, by the way. I need to get that off of there. There we go. You land on your ass and wet the blood from your eyes. Okay, this was embarrassing, but everyone makes mistakes, right? You can still salvage this friendship. You know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Oh, no. Our daughter is standing in the doorway with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. You will not be my friend. No! No! Oh, I'm... so not only do I not have a friend, but my pelvis and my ribs and my arm are broken and bloody and gushing and... Oh, I didn't even get medical attention. Rejection. <laughs> oh, crying too. Oh, of course it makes sense. She'd fill her eye like a castle. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that's, that's that's awful. That was like the worst possible ending I could have gotten. Jesus. Well, what a way to start off this, huh? What a way to... What a way to start off this series, if this is going to be a series. Let's just end this, this episode or whatever off with a bang by getting rejected at the front door while I'm bloody and possibly internally bleeding. Actually, I'm very much internally bleeding. And I caused a kid to suffer. And I was just going to use my suffering for views. I feel so loved. And that's that. Wow. What a, um... What a strange turn of events that was. So that was the presumably first, maybe last episode of Hive Swap Friendship Simulator Volume 1. Um, we've yet to do... Demon yet? Diamond? Damon? Whatever. Point is, um, if you guys want to see more of this, let me know down in the comments section below. Um, and I will definitely do more. This is actually kind of fun to do. 
first time I've really done a Let's Play, per se, on this channel. Um, I love Homestuck. If you guys have any more suggestions for Homestuck content, let me know. Um, other content is still on the way. But for now, that's going to be it. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all for whatever I plan next.